Uh, Walter Simmons is our guest speaker this evening, and he is just a wealth of knowledge. He, uh, in his current role, he leads Prince George's County's public workforce system. He staffs the workforce board and manages a staff of over 70 individuals and in employee Prince George's. Uh, he, is, he runs one of the largest workforce systems in the state of Maryland, serving over 30,000 job seekers and 4,000 businesses annually. He's been recognized as an influential Marylander by the Maryland Daily Record and, a, and the Washington Business Journal's 40 Under 40. I can't even remember when I was 40, and this guy's done more in his short time than I've done in my many years since that time. Uh, Walter believes that successful workforce systems are driven by innovation and the leveraging of resources through community partnerships, ensuring that businesses uh, that the business community is the driver of the workforce system. And so what I'm going to do is turn the Zoom room over to Walter Simmons. Folks, we have a chat. So if you have questions, you're welcome to please put your questions in the chat. Our staff is going to be monitoring that so that we can address this phenomenal speaker. And then I uh, hope that you all will engage in a conversation with Walter Simmons, who is the president and CEO of Employ Prince George's. Thank you so much, Mr. Simmons. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, Senator Griffith and everybody, good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, it is always a pleasure to talk with you and see that smiling face. So I am looking forward to tonight. So that we, uh, do you, Letitia, will you want me to share my screen? Karen, Karen's doing it, thank you, sorry. And okay. while, while you get ready, let me mention that I did see we have an elected official present. We have Commissioner Harriet Irving from the City of District Heights. And I have to mention the Dean of Howard University School of Social Work is here, Dr. Crew. It's good to see you. Everybody here, <coughs> the VIP at Let's Talk. All right. Well, it's it's a it's no pressure, no pressure, right? So uh let me let me. Uh, get my, my talking points together. Mr. Uh, Simmons, but, just let me know when you want me to change the slides, okay? That's fine. That's fine. You can go to that first slide now. Uh, so who is employed Prince George? Before I get into that, I'll say Maryland, you know, there's three types of workforce system that everybody should be aware of. One is your public workforce system, which is primarily funded through federal legislation and funding from the United States Department of Labor. You also have your nonprofit workforce system and then your private sector workforce system. Your nonprofit workforce system are your workforce development nonprofits that are funded through uh, foundations and various types of grants. And then your private sector workforce development systems are those funded by your private sector companies. Uh, we have a lot of companies in our region that fund their own independent workforce, uh, such as Boeing, uh, CVS, uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, as well as some government entities that fund their own internal workforce development, like NASA Goddard. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the Prince George's County public workforce system. Uh, and Prince George's County has 13 workforce development areas designated by the governor. And Prince George's County is a single county workforce area uh, that is governed by the Prince George's County Workforce Development Board. Uh, which is a 34 member board, three elected officials and 31 members of the community that have to comply with federal and state standards and they're appointed by the county executive, county executive also Brooks. And the county has designated employed Prince George's as its fiscal agent, staff and administrative agent that is uh, assigned to govern and operate the, will operate the Prince George's County Public Workforce System. Uh, we, have, we have branded our workforce system as the Prince George's County American Job Center Community Network. Uh, we're gonna talk about the website, but I'll give it to you before we get into it, which is www.pgcajc.com. That's www.pgcajc.com. And that is key because when you want to know what does the system offer, where can I get services, uh, who are the partners in the system, that website, www.pgcajc.com, 
and provide you that information. Also meetings, all our workforce board meetings, we have quarterly public meetings. So if you want to provide, if you want to be involved in the conversation and know what's happening, we also have RFPs, request for proposals. If you provide services in our community or want to be engaged or want to provide services, there are funding opportunities available. Uh, so that is, everything is listed on our PGC AJC dot com website uh, but and then epg as a nonprofit is also a workforce development provider and we provide we operate over four, we operate 14 workforce development programs um, from 20 different funding sources and that's why we're a 501c3 so that we can provide wraparound services to our community next slide please uh, so what what is the significance of this conversation uh, the significance and what you have in front of you is, is I always start these conversations by doing a snapshot of where we are today. And, and of course, like the senator said, going into the third year of the pandemic uh, of our new normal, what is the impact? The impact has been very significant. The second column, well, the first column has your economic indicators. That's unemployment rate, unemployment, and then employment, that third row. Keep in mind, when you hear the jobs number, when you hear the uh, president talk about jobs or the county executive or the governor, it's not the amount of jobs in an area, it's the amount of employed people in an area. And then labor force, which is the total amount of working age population in the area. In February, 2020, we had a 3.5% unemployment rate. We had almost 18,000 unemployed people we had 503,000 people be employed out of 521 uh, total working age uh, thousand people. And to give you an idea, that was actually an increase because going into 2020 in December of 2019, we had a two, almost a 3.23% unemployment rate. So it had actually gone up a little bit in February and we were kind of already seeing some of that COVID impact the international impact before it actually hit us at home. And we saw our first you know, countywide closures in March of 2020. By November of 2020, this time last year, we were coming down from the highest unemployment rate in Prince George's County history. In August and September of last year, we saw 10.9%. That's the highest unemployment rate since unemployment was started being collected in the United States at 10.9. By November, we were on the, uh, a downward trend at 9.1 thousand, 45,000 unemployed, which you see that number had more than doubled. We had lost people, people working. We had lost 50,000 jobs, 50,000 less employed people. And we lost 23,000 people out of our workforce. Today, the most recent unemployment numbers are 6% unemployment almost 30,000 unemployed people. Uh, we still have lost a significant amount of jobs. Uh, 462,000 uh, employed people, that's 40, we, that means we've lost 41,000 jobs. And then the labor force, uh, we've still have lost those people out of our labor force. Now, when that says lost, that doesn't mean they're unemployed. That means they're not, they're not unemployed and they're not looking. We know a large percentage of people retired uh, but we also know a lot of people just fell out because of economic hardship. And you hear this a lot where they could not afford to look for a job. We're going to talk about that later. Cannot afford to look for a job. So at 40, 492,000. Now, what is the long-term impact of this? This means that in the last two years uh, of this pandemic, we lost seven years of economic prog progress in our county. So our numbers now are what they look like in August of 2014. So if you, you, know, you, you heard the movie Back to the Future, uh, we went back into the past. We have the same economic numbers as 2014. And so the goal of Employee Prince George's and our work with Senator Griffith and the uh, General Assembly and the County Executive and the County Council is how do we get our economic workforce numbers back to where they were prior to the mass closures of March, 2020. And so 
Uh, that's what we're here to talk about today. And please ask questions, put them in the chat, uh, and, and we can stop and answer them. The senator will notify me. Next slide, please. So again, uh, Prince George's County American Job Center Community Network. Our community network is built uh, based on partnerships. As the Senator mentioned, I believe in partnerships. So three years ago, we knew that one entity could not meet all of the workforce development needs. So we created the community network. Uh, the community network has a tiered membership that includes community-based organizations, that's your nonprofit organizations, other community designated organizations, your faith-based organizations, traditional nonprofits, libraries, government agencies, service providers, and educational institutions. This means that if you are a member of your church, you volunteer at a community-based organization, and you do workforce development or workforce development related, you can be a partner of our public workforce system. We have the only workforce system in the country that operates as a free membership network, and that's what allows us to provide wraparound services to our community. So anyone on this call, if you, uh, if you work at a food pantry or volunteer, your church does it, if they do childcare, if you do training, tutoring, remediation, you provide uh, rent assistance, utility assistance, all of those are workforce related or workforce development you should be a member of our community network and the email below is who you can email if you wanna join our network. And that email, it's listed below, but it's epgcd2 at co.pg.md.us. That's epgcd2 at co.pg.md.us. Next slide, please. So, uh, we have three job centers in our network uh, where we might have, our goal is to eventually have over 250 members and a number of access points, but everything is really concentrated in our three job centers. We have American Job Center Largo, and, and we have American Job Center National Harbor, which is our newest job center that opened in Tanger Outlets. And in the middle, you'll see youth, the Youth Career Center. We have the only youth career center in our region. That's a youth career center that is solely designated for 18 to 24 year olds who are out of school and out of work. Uh, that means anybody 18 to 24, uh, if, they are, if they are in work or are in school but they're looking for a job, they can come as well. But it's, it's that youth career center is solely designated for 18 to 24 year olds. Why is that important? It's important because Prince George's County year in and year out normally ranks either number one or number two for having the highest population of what you call disconnected youth or out of school youth or at risk youth or opportunity youth. There's a number of different names, but what, it, what it's defined as is 18 to 24 year olds who are not enrolled in school and not employed. We normally rank number one and number two. That's a key issue as we talk about crime, if you've been paying attention to the news uh, before we hit this winter storm with carjackings, a number of kind of nuisance, that nuisance, vagrancy crimes, and either your crimes that are starting to elevate to becoming uh, more violent crimes, a key indicator that a, traditionally a large population are younger age youth that are getting into crime and elevating on that spectrum to more violent crime. So the more disconnected youth you see, normally the increase in youth poverty and normally the increase in crime. Uh, and Kim, number one or number two in Maryland, in the state of Maryland, uh, we rank there. Uh, so that's something that, that we really focus on. So that's why we have the Youth Career Center to try to start combating that and provide a location where disconnected youth or those entities that work with those populations can have a resource to get them back on the track. We also have to talk about graduating. We have about 8,000 graduating seniors per year out of Prince George's County Public Schools. This is also a place where those young adults can go to after graduation if they're not going to college or not going to military. And if, they, if you know them, if they're your children, your grandchildren, your cousin, your neighbor, this is a place where they can come to find out what is their next step in life. And again, our goal is to connect people within 90 days of graduation because after that 91st day, 
that's when, when you talk about youth becoming a statistic, every day that they're not correct, connected to a career pathway, it, it increases their chances of becoming what we call a statistic, means becoming long-term unemployed, committing a crime, things of that sort. So after that 91st day, every single day after that, the chances of that youth or young adult becoming a statistic and not being what we would deem as a successful citizen, that chance for them going down that wrong pathway drastically increases after the 90th day. So that Youth Career Center is a resource. Next slide, please. So this is American Job Center National Harbor. This is the newest American Job Center. It has three classrooms that offer virtual and in-person learning, a resource room where people can come and do resumes, apply for jobs, stay connected. Uh, and also if you are a community partner and you join the community network, you can also offer services out of American Job Center National Harbor. Next screen, please. And this is our newest addition. Uh, in 2022, and sometime in 2022, uh, we are dealing with supply chain issues in the manufacturing, but at some point in time, hopefully between March and June of this year, in the top left corner, you'll see an American Job Center mobile unit will arrive. This is not our vehicle, but this is what our vehicle will look like, even the same color, but this will have six stations and one ADA compliance station, and it is gonna be a mobile job center. Uh, this is a project that the Senator and I started three years ago, uh, and we secured funding uh, for the staff member, and we were uh, close before the governor vetoed it to secure the unit. But three years later, with the partnership of the Senator, uh, we've received funding, and we are building this mobile unit. And so this mobile unit will drive around the county, as in my earlier slides, I talked about we lost 30,000 people out of our workforce. And we don't know some retired, some are what I said, they are at a point where they can't afford to work we, we, or look for a job. We will be driving around the county. We have a full-time staff member, our outreach and operations specialist. will be driving around the county uh, doing pop-ups at community events. So if the Senator has an in-person town hall next year, we will have our job, our mobile job center out front if you have a community event or a church event, uh, please invite us. Again, you can email us at that same email, epgcd2 at co.pg.md.us. That's epgcd, the number two, at co.pg.md.us. Yes, uh, Dr. Crew, uh, and we'll partner with Howard University as well. So we will drive around. We, so let us know if you're doing a food distribution, uh, you're giving away clothes, backpacks for school, anything that you're doing, a community cookout, we will bring this on site. We also have the ability to bring employers on site, to bring the employers into the community to do a job fair. And that awning that you see in the left and that TV and the million screen, it'll roll out. People will sit under there. They can fill out the applications. We have laptops. It comes with a Wi-Fi hotspot where they can fill out online and then they can take turns coming into the unit to interview. Uh, so we can do a lot of tools here. So we really want to partner with everybody. If you have an event, email us to see if we can come to your event to bring jobs and or resources. That's epgcd2 at co.pg.md.us. That also includes we're partnering with other partners if we want to do some clinics. So free tax preparation, if you foreclosure prevention, financial literacy, this will be a mobile job center driving around the county. So again, EPG CD2 SEO.pg.md.us. Next slide, please. So uh, Don asked, do you provide training to clients? Yes, we're going to get into that right now. That's a great transition. So that concluded the part of the, the workshop or today's uh, session tonight about the entire community network. Now we're gonna go into EPG's 14 programs uh, as us as a nonprofit service provider. And our optimum goal is that we wanna connect qualified workers to businesses to improve the productivity of our local businesses and provide our job seekers, our residents, 
with opportunities for careers in high demand, high growth industries. Next slide, please. So these 14 programs, I'm gonna go around, do we provide training? No, we don't specifically provide what you call your hard skill, uh, short-term occupational skills training. But if you're eligible, if a resident is deemed eligible for any one of the programs that I'm getting ready to list, we can fund them to participate in a training. And when I say fund, we pay for the tuition or short-term training. We pay for the supplies. If it's a uniform, this is books. We pay for them to take their national exam. Uh, and if they fail, we might pay for them to take a second exam. And we provide transportation assistance and childcare while they're in the training. So we do provide that. And then down the road, I'll talk to you about how do we, who we have as training providers. But so the first seven programs that I'm going to go over are demographic specific programs. Next slide, please. These are programs that target specific populations. Our first program is Encore. It's our experienced workers program. Uh, this is for job seekers who are 50 plus, if they are, but they're looking for uh, full-time employment. So uh, we also work with part-time employment, but it's predominantly full-time employment. Uh, and so uh, if you're 50 plus, you're in a career transition, you're coming back to work after being retired, or you've been consistently working, or you're struggling to find a job, anyone in this category of 50 plus, we have the 50 plus, uh, our Encore program, uh, and it comes with specific workshops. We have digital literacy if they're not good on the computer, if they are looking for externships, which means you, you think you can get a job, but you might not have been in the field for a while, we can work with an employer. Well, we'll, we'll put you on that job and we'll pay you for the first three to four weeks to show, allow you to show that employer that you can do the job with the goal that the employer hires you after the first three to four weeks. Walter, I just have a quick question before you move on off that one, if it's okay. Sure. Can you just give, an, give us an example? Like I'm over 50. What would my experience be like interacting with that program and maybe a sample of a client you can think of, not by name, but the type of job connection you could help with? Oh, it could range. Uh, so to give you an example, we had, I think we had a 68 year old retired uh, grandmother. She listed herself that, uh, who had been out of the work. She'd worked in federal services and she had retired from the federal government, but she was an artist and she wanted to get back into the workforce. So traditionally we were looking at office jobs, uh, looked at her experience, but she told us, she said, I don't want to do that anymore. I did that for 30 years. I don't do that. She was actually interested in construction because she had, she mentioned art and painting. We actually matched her with the painters union and she completed a pre-apprenticeship program that we funded. And she actually went in to become an industrial painter. That means the same people, they just built the bridge in DC uh, and the people that paint the bridge. She was actually in that group of people who three, 400 feet in the air became a bridge painter. On the opposite end, we have people that have transferred and wanna get skilled in the office training. So we do, we pay for project management uh, certifications. We also pay for SHRM. So we've had some people that have done traditional office work that have now came back and transitioned into a higher paying office job, either as working as an HR generalist HR associate, or they wanted to increase to an HR manager. And then we have people who come in who are struggling to find work, either because of just a stigma of, uh, they can't prove it, but they think it's because of their age. And so we work with family services, but also funded our own, uh, an opportunity for them to, for us to match them with a job that they feel is a good fit. And then we'll actually pay for their first three weeks. So it really could range, Senator. Uh, and the experience with them, the, them calling, calling or emailing us, uh, setting up an appointment, either virtual or in person. We have gone to a limited time and through January 14th, uh, being virtual due to the increases in COVID, uh, where they would say, hey, I'm Jane or John Doe. Uh, I live in Bowie or I live in Capitol Heights or I, I'm living wherever in the Prince George's County, but I'm a Prince George's County resident. And... And they then say, uh, I'm, I'm 
58 or I'm 62 and I'm looking for employment. And they start, they would tell our staff what barriers to have and they'll match them with the program uh, that will, and, and put them in contact with a staff member. They will have to complete some eligibility documents uh, to assess their eligibility. And we will go through that process. There's also the opportunity down the road, we have something called hot jobs. So we do a job fair almost every two weeks and they might just do a quick resume review, review and we could have a hiring event the next week that might be a good fit. And those are employers that we're working with, that we have the relationship with uh, to, to ensure that their application is received. And if they qualify, get them an interview. So it could, it, it could vastly, uh, it could be vastly different, but it's a customized experience for every person that gets in the program. All right, next slide, please. Somebody have a raised hand. Okay. Kim Taylor has a question. Yeah, Walter, this is Kim Taylor from Family Choice Healthcare. Uh, we actually participated in a 50 and over uh, job fair a few years ago. And I mean, the attendance was far beyond what we expected. And we brought a perspective to it that a lot of the uh, participants weren't expecting. So we are a home healthcare company. And a lot of the folks were looking for administrative and some other types of um, office and desk jobs. But we proposed that they could be caregivers for seniors um, or companions for seniors. And we got, I don't know, 25, 30 resumes for folks interested in that type of position. So, you know, we actually did broaden sort of the 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 horizon of some of the participants in that 50 and over and they make the best companions and <laughs> and caregivers yeah and kim you're right uh and kim you're right there's a lot of different jobs available that a lot of people don't realize are available and there are a lot of employers as kim shared with everybody that want to hire 50 plus a lot of there's a stigma that people don't there are employers like kim mentioned that are searching for different age demographics as well and then, as Kim mentioned, we partnered with Wanisi Grant prior to the pandemic to have the 50 plus job fair. And as Kim mentioned, they were huge. Uh, when, when, when it's safe to do so, we'll bring those back. Of course, it's not safe to bring a large population because what Kim mentioned, we, we used to do those annually with several hundred uh, 50 plus job seekers. And normally we had anywhere from 20 to 40 businesses. So. Everybody keep on the lookout, as Kim mentioned, that 50 plus job fair, when it's safe, we will be bringing those back, uh, but we do focus on safety right now. But we do virtual job fairs. So I'll give you the link later on that we do have virtual job fairs. We have a virtual job fair platform and we do virtual job fairs almost every two weeks for our participants. Next one is Career Pathways for All. This is the only workforce program in the region designated for immigrants, refugees, uh, sailies, and those residing in those households, which is first generation uh, uh, US citizens, uh, or those who are, are, are different family members who reside in those households. And we have a career pathways for all coordinator. We focus on a number of issues on this program. If it's, a, if it's literacy, if it's education, if it's helping parents get their students registered, if it's translating educational attainment from a previous country uh, into what it would be in US standards, that's a number of different customized services dedicated to immigrants, refugees, asylees, and English language learners. And I, and I know I see a lot of people going up and down writing. I'm pretty sure we can provide this presentation or information out to you all. So don't try to write it all at one time. Uh, I will make sure we get it to you. But that is Career Pathways for All, Immigrants, Refugees, Asylees, and English Language Learners. And again, all of these programs provide specific services for the population, but we also pay for training. We provide remediation services. And what is remediation? This is key. We have the, Prince George's County has the largest population of adults that are basic skills deficient. This means that they don't read or write at the eighth grade reading level. And that means they struggle on some of the competency tests for employers that can't pass those tests. We will fund 
you to receive the remediation so that you can help pass that test. Uh, we have the largest population of adults uh, that are reading and writing uh, math computation is below an eighth grade reading level. Uh, and so to give you an idea, 82% of the adults with the high school diploma that come through our job center aren't reading and writing on the eighth grade reading level, and we provide those free services. We also can work with those who don't have a high school diploma. Uh, and, and sometimes if your education in the country does not translate, we can provide that. I heard someone talking. Did I miss a question, Senator? No. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Y'all jump in. Uh, next slide, please. Veterans. Uh, we offer service. So Prince George County has the is the largest population of veterans in Maryland. So we offer a number of different workforce development services to help veterans secure employment, uh, translate their military service into civilian experience also work with various train providers that allow them to translate their military experience into educational uh, credential attainment. And this is not only for veterans, it's veterans and it's also active military service members who are transitioning out of the military. So if you're within 180 days of leaving the military, you are eligible for this program, but also the spouses of veterans. So it's veterans, transitioning service members and their spouses are eligible. And, and I'll stop here. The Career Path Race for All program that I mentioned, someone, and then, so the Career Path Race for All program and this Veterans Career Connection, both have entrepreneurship components. This means that if you wanna start a business and you're a veteran or you're an immigrant, refugee, a sailor, English language learner, and you wanna start a business, we actually will tra provide training to help you start a business. And they, each of those trainings at the end, there's a pitch competition like Shark Tank, and the winner can receive up to a $1,500, $1,000 to $1,500 to start or grow their business. So we offer, offer entrepreneurship training that can lead to a $1,000 or $1,500 award to start or grow your business. Next slide, please. Pathways to success. This is for returning citizens, people who have a criminal record, or those who are justice involved. We will actually, so what does justice involved mean? You know someone or you're in court. We actually go to, go to the circuit court every Wednesday and we travel across the country that we will advocate on your behalf to say, if this person receives a lighter sentence or is released into, uh, into uh, monitoring, as long as they can participate in this program, we will actually go to court. We go to court every Wednesday uh, to advocate on behalf of our residents. And we have traveled. If you have family members that are incarcerated federally across the country, we have sent staff as far as Colorado to testify in court. So don't think that if you're a Prince George's County resident, regardless of whether they're currently incarcerated, California, Colorado, North Carolina, if they need to come home and the judge says, well, we need to know that you're gonna be on the right track, employ Prince George's will travel for our residents. So that's something that people say, oh, I wish I would have known, we will travel. So if you have a resident who is incarcerated in another state or in court and their release, an early release is dependent on them being attached to a program, contact us. We will travel and go to court to testify on your behalf. And we have traveled as far as Colorado. So just let us know. So these services, Another thing to know is we are the only job center in the DC metropolitan region that has a full-time lawyer. That means Monday through Thursday, you don't have to wait for an expungement clinic. We do expungements Monday through Thursday when our job centers are open. You do not have to wait for an expungement clinic. We do the Monday through Thursday. We have a, job, a lawyer at American Job Center National Harbor and a, a lawyer at American Job Center Largo. Uh, so you don't have to wait. We provide those services. We also offer federal bonding, which is a $5,000 bond for returning citizens that they can give to the employer just to provide some services. We do various legal aid. We offer free skills training. We do entrepreneurship training as well as skills training. We also have a reentry job club uh, and a number of wraparound services at the Bridge Center Adams House. So we can help people get an ID. If they're homeless, we can help them 
pay for a hotel for a couple of nights, connect them to services. We can also help connect you with the necessary healthcare services to get them access to healthcare. So if we don't provide it, we have a number of resources to provide wraparound services, and that is for returning citizens and those who are justice involved if they're on monitoring as well. So if you don't know what justice involved or monitoring, that means you probably don't know, but those who do know what it is, know that you are also or your family members are eligible. And pretty sure this county ranks number two by having the number second highest in Maryland percentage of residents who are incarcerated or have a criminal record behind Baltimore City. So we all, even we they might not know it, we know somebody who has a criminal record. Next slide, please. So our biggest program, our COVID-19 workforce development program, as I mentioned, 30,000, 40,000 people are still without a job. If you are unemployed or you know somebody that's unemployed, refer them to this program. Job fairs bi-weekly, resume reviews. If you don't want to go back into your industry, your industry is not employed, we'll do what are the transferable skills. We will do all of the above to help you regain employment. And next slide, please. The biggest part of this training is the rapid reemployment grant. If you are an unemployed job seeker in Prince George's County, if an employer anywhere in the region hires you, they can get up to $15,000 to hire you. That means we will, we will give an employer a grant that reimburses them or that, that supplements the first 12 weeks of an unemployed Prince George's County resident's salary for up to 55 to 75% of that salary and up to $15,000. So if an employer hires an unemployed Prince George's County resident, they can receive $15,000. That means that every single unemployed Prince George's County resident has a gold ticket. They're walking around with a gold ticket on every interview and you should give employers this flyer to let them know that you can that they hire you get $15,000 because 72% of our workers work outside of the region, outside of our county. No, unemployment, I just saw Dr. Crew does not have to be related to COVID-19. And this is another one. We need to give everybody a round of applause for Senator Griffith and our colleagues in the Prince George's County delegation, because through the American Rescue Plan Act, they secured $11 million in workforce funding from the state for this program and the law says that if they were unemployed prior to COVID or unemployed because of COVID, they are eligible, Dr. Crew. So this funding, we are, so we have nine of that 11, we have almost 10 million that is allocated for this. And so far, uh, we've gotten over a hundred residents employed in a short period of time, but thank you, Senator Griffith, because that doesn't happen without you and your colleagues. Uh, and, and you know, I appreciate you for that. So also, if you are an employee, that means private sector, or a nonprofit, or even if you work for a government entity, they also qualify for these grants. So that means if you're an employer and you're on this, or someone in your family is a small business owner and you struggled during COVID, you or you had to lay off people, every unemployed resident, that means if they were previously an employee and you're bringing them back, you can get up to $15,000. If they're a new employee, $15,000. Don't let your family members or you yourself that is a business owner hire an unemployed Prince George's County resident and not get access to this rapid reemployment grant. And you can go to employpg.org and backslash COVID-19 and the information is there, but employpg.org COVID resources. And again, if you need the flyer, you want this, do not hire someone that and not get this grant. And just don't hire anybody that's not an unemployed Prince George's County resident. I can say that on this call, right, Senator? Let's, just only hire unemployed Prince George's County residents. Uh, even if you live, if the business is in Montgomery and around the still only hire unemployed Prince George's County residents. Uh, but again, if you're unemployed, or you got a family member who's unemployed, they have a $15,000 golden ticket that they're walking around with and they need to tell employers that. Next slide, please. So next one is for you. Do unemployed residents have to be registered with unemployed Prince George's? They have to be registered in the program, but their unemployment they're, they're mandated to be registered with whatever state they were working in. So no, the state that they receive an unemployment in does not matter. They just have to be an unemployed Prince George's County resident and register with employed Prince George's. Great question. I'm not catching all these questions, but sometime I'll catch them. Next two programs, knowledge equals youth success. That is for out-of-school youth 
18 to 24. We already talked about that. But Youth Career Connections is another program that is for juniors and seniors who are not on track for college or the military. So the Youth Career uh, Knowledge Equals Youth Success and Youth Career Connections are for 18 to 24 out of school youth. Youth Career Connections is to prevent youth from being disconnected. If they're in junior or senior and not on track for college or the military, we wanna make sure that when they walk across that stage, they're employed within 30 days or they're in a workforce program. And at the maximum, remember, we need to be sure that our youth are employed or in a program by that 91st day. But ideally we wanna get them employed or in a workforce program uh, within uh, the first 30 days. Next slide, please. Good evening, thank you very much. Uh, my question to you, Mr. Simmons, when you send uh, prospective candidates out to an employer, are you pre-screening them and yes. preparing them? Have you answered all their ancillary um, issues such as childcare, transportation? Yeah, so the first programs that I just discussed, the demographic specific, are focused on the hardest to serve. So we address those barriers, Ms. Collier. And then internally, we also have an employment training and assessment where we assess for basic skills comprehension, rap, math and reading literacy. Uh, we mm -hmm. also do career readiness, resume, cover letter. Uh, we even do career assessments to make sure they're matched in the right career. And we work to address childcare, uh, license, uh, transportation. So those, those other areas that relate to them being job ready. And we, when they come through a program, they must be job ready before they can receive a referral. Now the opposite end, we also work with employers to help promote and do hiring events where we just blast it out to our, our network of the 30,000. So if we do an open hiring event, of course, anybody uh, can, can come in and apply. But if, if, it's, a, if it's a structured, selective process, we pre-screen. Also to note, Ms. Collier and everybody, we actually post jobs for free for the employer. We can help with job descriptions uh, and a number of other services. So a lot of businesses pay for this, but this is a free service that we offer as well. We do the flyer. We even can fly a drone through your business and record a video so you can promote your business and the specific job opportunity. All of that's free to business. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Najee, you got some questions for me? I do. Uh, the first question we have here, uh, this actually goes, goes hand in hand, maybe just where they can send them. But if we have job openings, can we send a job description to post? Yes, yes, you can You can send it. And and I will make sure the uh, we can put this in the, Najee, if we can put this or, or, or whomever can put this in the chat, businesses, if you want to post your job with us or you want to do a hiring event, you can call us at 301-618-8444, 301-618-8444, or you can email us directly at businessservices at co.pg.md.us. That's Email us at business services plural at co dot uh, co dot pg dot md dot us and I and and I stumped myself on that one so I'm gonna type it. Uh, in, oh, somebody got it. yes. And, and so well, business services at co dot pg and so we will do those services and if you're a small business, let us post, do videos, do flyers for you for free before you start paying for. It. And let me just tell folks, one of the reasons we're so excited about the Let's Talk program, in addition to getting this valuable information live, you can also visit our YouTube channel. We'll be reposting this video. Those of you that have registered for today's presentation, as well as our previous guests on Let's Talk, will receive summary notes with highlights from tonight's presentation. You'll receive Mr. Simmons' PowerPoint presentation, and we'll provide the links email addresses and phone number that he's provided in our follow-up newsletter that will come out. Uh, how soon, folks? In about a week or so? 
We'll try to get that as quickly as possible. They're giving me a thumbs up. So back to you, Najee, for another question, I think. Yes, ma'am. Um, do, do you have the programs to help people that are on disability get back into the workforce? We don't have a specific disability program, but if they're receiving disability, they are eligible for several of our grants. It just depends on the severity of the disability. Uh, if it's a severe disability, uh, we don't have necessarily the resources or funding to address that. We'll make a referral, uh, but we do try to do as best we can. Uh, just depends on the severity of the disability. Uh, but if they have a disability and they can prove it through whatever benefit paperwork, it does make them eligible for a lot of our programs. Uh, again, we mentioned we have 20 funding streams. So we apply for grants from all over the country to make sure that we don't have to turn anyone away and all of our services are free. Thank you. Back to the PowerPoint. Okay. All right. So now we're talking about industry specific programs. These are programs that provide training and assistance specifically for an industry. So we have our construction works program, which is construction and real, and real estate. We offer training. We offer a uh, work experience for youth and adults and something called on the job training, OJT. This is where an employer can hire someone. And again, another grant, if that person doesn't have the necessary skill sets, we will actually reimburse them on a monthly basis, a portion of the salary of that person to train them. So that means if you have the aptitude uh, and the attitude to do the job but you, and to develop the skills, but you don't have them, we will fund that employer to train people in these industries. So this is construction. So you see there, heavy equipment operator, welder, uh, carpentry. We also work with the union, Prince George's County, is home to 36 uh, building trade unions. We work, we do pre-apprenticeships to help people develop the skills and help them get into an apprenticeship. And why is that important? Because a lot of these unions get federal contracts and they have Davis Bacon wages. What that means is the federal standard and the average apprentice starts out with, with not even a high school diploma minimum because some apprenticeships allow you to start without a high school diploma at $45,000 to $50,000. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's very hard to find a job that, that allows you to come without a high school diploma and starts with 50,000 plus benefits. So 36 building trades union. And so that's the construction works program. Uh, we also offer different training specifically for construction. We just closed out a heavy equipment and landscape operator training. We also do stuff that are arborists that are talking about the trees, and bushes and different pesticides. So it, it, there's a lot that goes into the construction program up until what I mentioned earlier is the industrial bridge painting. Next slide. The next industry of focus, next slide please. Oh, there you go, is EPIC, the Educational Partnership for IT Careers. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a good one. I get excited. I know I gotta slow it down, I'm getting excited. So, but listen, this is, I'm gonna tell y'all a secret that's not a secret. We do a program through the Educational Partnership of IT Careers. That means we're doing all computer, IT, software, cybersecurity. We will pay for you to get training. And a lot of these jobs start at 55 to 65,000 once you get your credentials. But someone asked, what training do we offer? We have a partnership right now for our IT help desk to get into the IT if you're transitioning from a new career or you're starting or you're a young person. We will pay people a thousand dollars to enroll in this program. So in this program, we do a virtual IT training. So we'll give you a loaner laptop. Two, the training comes with uh, two certificates, two certificates, but you have to take three tests. You'll get $250 for every test you pass. So we'll pay for you to enter the training. We'll give you a laptop. We'll pay for you to take your exam. And then if you pass the exam, you get $250. So you pass all three of your exams, you get $750. Then we'll help you get a job. You get a job within 90 days after graduation, you get another $250. So when you complete this program, you will receive $1,000. So basically, we'll give you $1,000 and pay for you to get this program and pay for you to use a laptop to complete the program and help you get a job. 
So I love this program right now. This is the Educational Partnership for IT Careers. This is this is CompTIA A+, Network Plus, Cybersecurity. We have NASA Goddard in our county, right? We're next to the Pentagon. This is a career everybody should be looking at. We will pay people and provide, help you get uh, the training to get these to get these certifications to qualify for these jobs. And this is huge for our region. We are in the cybersecurity capital of the United States. Next slide, please. Healthcare. Healthcare is huge because of COVID. We will do, we will pay for you again. We'll, you see the lady, we'll pay for your scrubs, stethoscope. We will do everything to get you in these trainings and pay for them. We will also do, we also work with COVID-19 related jobs. So we were funding community healthcare workers. We'll fund for that. A lot of people taking the blood and testing, phlebotomy technicians, we'll pay for those. So all of these programs will we'll connect you with the opportunities, we'll pay for the training, and we have job fairs. If you pay attention to our website, we have job fairs that are specific for all of these industries that I'm mentioning. So that means we work with employers directly and do job fairs for our graduates. Most of our graduates are employed within 30 days after completing their training. If you already are trained or have your certification, but you need to get recertified, we can pay for that as well. Let's say you let your certification lapse or you're retired and you wanna come back for two, three years and you're eligible. Uh, we also have remediation where we can put you through courses to help you get your certification as well. Uh, and we have job fairs that are specific for these programs and graduates. Who do we, con I just saw one pop up, who do we contact to sign up? Uh, again, you, you, you visit us, employpg.org, each on our website under Job Seekers, each of these programs has its own tab and an email who you can email to contact. Next slide, please. Hospitality and Accommodation Institute. We just opened American Jobs in National Harbor. We work with hotels, restaurants, also uh, customer service, entertainment, and tourism to help you get into these careers. Again, there's apprenticeships, there's occupational skills training, there's direct job fairs, there's internal training programs. We do all of the above to help you get prepared for this training. Next slide. Professional services, I mentioned this earlier. These are for jobs, traditionally white collar jobs, also some of your higher paying jobs. Uh, PMP, project manager, we're in the federal arena so people need their PMP certification. We'll pay for you to get that. Your SHRM certifications, both of them, your regular and your senior, we'll pay for those. Uh, we also do uh, different job fairs for those areas. We also help you get your professional licensure. If it's for accounting or any other area, we can pay for you to get those licensures. And we do specific hiring events for those jobs as well, uh, including education, child development. So keep that in mind. Next slide. Oh, we missed the slide, I missed one. So there's another training that we didn't mention is the transportation and logistics consortium, TALC. We just launched it last month in December. We will actually pay for people to get their CDL license. Uh, we also work with Amazon. We got 30 people in November employed with Amazon uh, for the transportation logistics consortium. And right now we are recruiting for people that we will pay people 15 to $20 an hour to help deliver food throughout the county while training them in this industry uh, so they can make between $15 and $20 an hour and be in training for six months. And at the end of the six months or prior to, we'll help them get a job. That's the Transportation Logistics Consortium that's on our website. So in closing, our last three things I want people to be really cognizant of. We have Skill Up Prince George's County on our PGC.AGC website. Let's say you want to do training, but you're working, you're in school, and this is something you want to do in your own time. We have a free electronic learning management system, ELMS, and it's called Skill Up Prince George's County. You have every Prince George's County resident has access to over 4,000 free courses. It says 4,500. We're actually over 5,000 courses that are self paced online that are free for Prince George's County residents. You can take advantage of that at www.pgcajc.com or you can click that link once you get this PowerPoint. Next, we have a virtual career center. We offer mock interviews, resume prep, cover letter development. You can really do a whole mock interview, career assessment, everything virtually, and that's pgccareers.com. 
And then lastly, hot jobs. If you go on our website, employpg.org, go to Job Seeker, and then you hit hot jobs, we do hot jobs every two weeks. These are current jobs that we are sourcing for. That means when you give us your resume, we give it to the employer. And we do that every two weeks. You can go to our website and see the hot jobs for the most recent hot jobs every two weeks. And then, as I said, virtual hiring events. If you go to our events page, you can get the virtual hiring events. We do job fairs almost every two weeks. And then quarterly, we do a large in-person job fair. We did one. We did one in November. We're going to probably do another one in February, COVID preventing, because we got to be safe, everybody. Don't get mad at me if I cancel it, because if I cancel it, it's because I care about your life. And I don't want to put your life in jeopardy, our businesses, nor our staff. But COVID preventing, we'll do another one in February. And this is where we do interviews and job offers on site. Last time we had 55 employers on site. Out of those 55, 25 were doing on-site interviews and contingent offers. Over, I think over 50 people walked away that day with an actual job offer. We had the job was the job that was on a Tuesday, and on Friday, somebody had already started employment. So keep that in mind. And that's quarterly. And those are the two links there. That is my, my presentation. I'm I know the center had to drop off, but I can answer questions. Uh and 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 we can, you know, I, I'm my time is yours. Thank you, Mr. Simmons, for all that information. <laughs> we appreciate you. Um, like he said, it is a lot of information, and I know I know everybody heard something that either they can use or somebody that they know can use. So I appreciate you taking time out to even present that. And like we also said, if you miss something, it's in the chat, or we'll be compiling the information and we'll have it available. Um, if you're registered for the event, it will come to you. If you know somebody who needs the information, you can have them send their email address to us. We'll add them to the newsletter, um, I mean, our distribution list, and send it to them. Also, the full presentation will be posted on the Senator's uh, YouTube page. But this is a wealth of knowledge. With what you said, I don't know why anybody would be unemployed in Prince George's County, honestly, right? <laughs> I mean, that, you, you're giving them golden tickets, you're, you're training them, you're providing daycare, you're providing transportation. So basically, you're cutting out all the excuses that there could be. So I, I'm sure that everybody on this call knows somebody who needs a job. I know our office has been getting a lot of people who are fighting to get their unemployment. But what we've been focusing on now is the unemployment may come, it may be a large check, but more than likely if, you get, if you're getting a large check, you owe somebody else a large piece of money. So it's gonna, it's gonna balance itself out. People need jobs, people need careers. So we'll definitely be sending people your way. And just to, just to make it easy, if somebody does need to come your way, the link we should be using the employpg.org. Yep, employpg.org. And each program has a specific uh, link and our email is available as well. Uh, and, and, and we can't, you know, as Le Le Letitia mentioned, we can't, we don't do unemployment. That is the Maryland Department of Labor. Uh, we try to, try to put you on a, a list to get help, but you know, she's right. There's not much we can do at a local level where we're trying, uh, but, the biggest issue we see is people don't know. So even if, if you're not, if you don't need these services, there's someone in your network, church, community, neighbor, family member, cousin, uncle, cousin, somebody needs this information. And especially if they're unemployed, I can guarantee you everybody doesn't know. Every unemployed person in this county doesn't know they're walking around with that $15,000 ticket. To date, this year alone, we've given out $600,000. And in the, since November of last year, uh, tw well, two years, 2020, 2021, we've given out over $1.1 million to businesses who hire Prince George County residents. So I think a, the big thing is we just need people to know uh, the, the services and resources because there's 40,000 people that are walking around with a $15,000 ticket. Every interview they go to, they should tell that employee. And, and we're the only, well, Montgomery has a similar program, but we have the largest. That means if there's three like-minded experienced or educated people that if, if, if the employer starts to say, well, why should I hire Walter versus hire Najee versus hiring uh, Beal? And, and Beal is from Prince George's County. Beal is the only person who has a $15,000 ticket. And if Beal doesn't know that, how can he differentiate himself from Najee and Walter? So 
I think if you all know people, you should just let them know, like, hey, I'm looking for a job. Hey, do you know, do you know you got a fifteen thousand dollar ticket? Um, so and they and that's the maximum. They might not get fifteen thousand dollars. And businesses, I didn't mention this, small businesses, which means that they have less than two hundred employees, their their grant supplements seventy five percent of that new hire salary. If there's two hundred or more employees, they get a grant that supplements. 50%. And it's not a reimbursable grant. This means on the first day of employment, they get that grant that supplements that new hire salary for the first 12 weeks. And as long as they don't terminate uh, or get rid of the person, they keep that money. I'm sure that answered the question because I, I was about to ask, <laughs> how, how do you guarantee the money? What yeah, does so it we, look like? So we give them a check on the first day. That's what the uh, uh, Senator was talking about, we miss having you all at our event. Uh, every time that, so we, if a business is located in the Senator's district, we'll invite the Senator and staff uh, to do, or of a resident to do that disbursement. Uh, so we do a follow-up. So the resident and the employer signs the agreement. And so we follow up with that employer and the resident just to make sure they, they didn't fire them the next day. Uh, and that's how we ensure that they stay for the 12 weeks. Uh, but, you know, that's huge. I mean, see, you also talk about driver jobs. We pay for people to get their license. Um, people don't know, you know, if you're young, they have to go through the classes and things of that sort. Well, I can't afford the class. We'll pay for the class. Or I physically can't pay the $50 to get my license. We'll pay the $50. And that's a non-commercial, just your regular driver's license because Amazon, UPS, FedEx, all, a lot of these companies, you can drive for them using a regular vehicle or van. You don't need a CDL, commercial driver's license. But we'll also pay for the commercial driver's license course as well. And we do A and B. So if you want to do a passenger or you want to do commercial over the road, we'll pay for both. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, Najee, do we have any other questions in the chat box? You just read my mind. So <laughs> we, have, uh, we, have, we have just a couple here, uh, the first being, how do you help people who are interested in government jobs? Oh, so we, we're actually getting up ready for this year. We're getting ready to launch called Pathways to Government. Uh, we're, we started with county and local government. We'll be working to identify local jobs. And so that'll be coming up soon. It's called Pathways to Government. Two, we have a, a monthly workshop, which is the federal jobs workshop, where we actually have a contractor come in and do a workshop on how to secure a federal job. That's going through the resume, that's listing your experience. So we do the federal jobs workshop monthly. Uh, and we also have for local county government jobs, pathways to government. And, when, and, and they're working with the municipalities. If a municipality chooses to partner with us, we also will do a customized cohort to get uh, municipal jobs. So we did one two years ago with Hyattsville they had five openings with their public works. We did a cohort specifically for the city of Hyattsville. Uh, for that, we're going. We're working with County Executive Also Brooks to do a co the pathways to government for county jobs and do for federal jobs. Uh, we do a monthly federal jobs workshop. Are there jobs that you have not heard about before COVID that might be available now? After oh yeah, community healthcare workers are huge, uh, and people. That's not just hospitals. Uh, we place community health care workers. It's an actual certification. We're, we're doing training for that. We'll, we'll, again, we'll pay for the training. Uh, and every, because a, a contact tracing community health care worker, that is a new COVID title, a COVID job. It was created due to COVID. And we place people even in the Maryland General Assembly, the uh, community health care workers, we place them in government. We place them in manufacturing facilities. These are the people that inform, track, and, and, and do provide general information in all different types related to COVID. So that's a community healthcare worker. Also, bigger job is the, I said it earlier, non-commercial driving job. There are a lot of just driver oriented jobs. You see that Amazon added those long mile facilities. We got three or four of them in the county and they're driving in regular vans. So there's a lot of just driver jobs, not commercial, driver jobs. And that's why we put an increased focus on paying for people to get their regular driver's license so they can qualify for those jobs. We also have, because of COVID, 
we did like two or three trillion dollars uh, in the logistics industry. And the DC area is a major hub. That's why Peloton, if you know everybody's on the Peloton bicycle, I can't afford one, but I got a regular bicycle. Uh, but for those that have it, there's a, a, a uh, they're opening a warehouse in Prince George's County. Amazon opened a facility. There's a lot of warehouse jobs that are opening up uh, and we provide free training there. We have an online training tool to prepare people for that. So healthcare, community healthcare worker, traditional non-commercial uh, driving jobs, and then a lot of manufacturing. We weren't really known for manufacturing warehouses, but the county has a growing industry and a lot of jobs that are increasing. That's helpful. And, and I think this will actually dovetail into this last question we have here. Uh, is there a surge of certain industries post the pandemic? And I feel like that goes hand in hand. Yeah, a lot of the healthcare, transportation, uh, and, and warehousing, that's the biggest surge. That is so now, awesome. Now, I'll say this um, a lot of people don't look at it. Uh, and I think we need to, you know, uh, while government jobs are great, it's not for everybody. And I think we really have to, we forget a job that the hospitality and retail, Tanger outlets in National Harbor, people don't realize, you know, a lot of people talk about the negative. We have to talk about the negative to make it a positive, but we have a lot of positive in our county that, that, that people don't talk about. So our Tanger is a top, normally a top 10 or a top five Tanger outlets in the country. It means the highest selling. When I was talking with the uh, leadership at Tanger, they told me that they could, we could have the number one Tanger but the issue is they don't have enough managers. And that's positions that can pay 50, 55, upwards to 75,000 plus. So another job that we're really looking at is to put people in management uh, to work their way through. And that's what you call a key holder. Uh, so that's another job. And the same thing in hospitality. A lot of hospitality managers, uh, they're looking for those jobs as well. Now you have to be prepared to stand on your feet, work holidays, but that's huge. Uh, a lot of your hospitality and keyholder jobs. And again, this is a huge population, doesn't require a college degree, and you can make north of $50,000 without a college degree. And a lot of times in the keyholder jobs, in two to three years, you can move up the career pathway uh, very fast. So um, right now, there's a huge need of what you call keyholders. Uh, and those are, and I think that's something that we've left for obvious reasons, but there's a lot of keyholder positions. And, and, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but I'm not running away for a $55,000 an hour job. If you, if you look at our median household income in our county, it's 84,000, right? But on average, there's two and a half adults. So that puts the per capita median household income, median per person at 42,000, right? So that means if this job is paying 55,000, that's more than the median average. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you're thinking about those types of jobs. Uh, there's also the, the CVS. A lot of people don't realize the retail store manager and pharmacy tech jobs are also higher paying jobs as well. And there's a lot of growth and they will train you. Second, I think a lot of people need to look at, there's a new way we need to look at getting people college degrees. I'm gonna be honest. We, we really are missing the boat here in our county is that a lot of these employers like CVS, like University of Maryland, like NGM, like Marriott, uh, will pay for people to get their college degree uh, as a tuition reimbursement, tuition supplement, um, Six Flags as well. Um, so that's something to look at is, is, is really, can you utilize this job as a gateway job and you work, you earn, and in five or six years, you get your degree with zero student loan debt. As a person that has student loan debt, we need, to, we need to keep people away. And if we can get away for them to get that, get the degree while earning a living, um, that's something to look at as well. And places like CVS, they'll pay for them to get a, a, up to a nursing degree, a pharmacy degree. I had a cousin uh, that was in Hyattsville, went through, uh, and CVS paid for her entire degree. And she was at Towson. She has zero student loan debt worked all throughout high school and college uh, at the CVS and Bowie uh, and got her, and CVS paid for her degree as well. So, I mean, at, at, she's living on the high life 
uh, to take it, take advantage of that. I think we miss out on those. And I think some things we need to think about is when we're talking about salary and benefits, we shouldn't get caught on the immediate salary because the cost that they pay for your tuition, you know, that could be 10, 12, $15,000 a year on top of what they're actually making in earnings. So I think that's something we should not see. And because of the competing labor market, more employers are offering these benefits to attract people. Virtual jobs has also increased, especially in professional services. Uh, we have one of the major, we have a lot of educators in our county. A lot of people are transitioning out or have career interests to you right there located in New Carrollton has a large amount of jobs for basically career advisors, 100% virtual. You never have to go into the office. So you should really look at these virtual jobs as well. Uh, Verizon, a lot of your phone carriers, uh, internet carriers have moved a lot of their jobs to virtual. So a virtual job has drastically increased, but you do have to have high speed internet and a laptop most likely. A lot of times they won't provide that. Some do, but we should look at that as well. Awesome, awesome. Again, I see that Ms. Collier put in here that um, they're looking for uh, CNAs. So and I, it's a wide spectrum of people on here and I know several are employers and recruiters. So if you do have jobs, that you want to, you know, us to include in the summary, then please feel free to either send an email to the um, to our email address or send it to Mr. Uh, to Mr. Simmons so that we can get Prince George's County employed. Like just listening to him, I don't know why anybody could possibly be in unemployed because there are the I, resources there. And if I can, for the employers, we didn't talk a lot about the employers. I mentioned the rapid reemployment grant, but I want to share this. Uh, this is the COVID-19 workforce development. So you just go to employpg.org backslash rapid grants, but it gives information and the application is online. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to have the job posted yet and you don't have to have the people yet. If you know that you are going to have a job posted in the next 30 days or you're going to be hiring in the next 90 days, you should go in right now and complete the application so that when you are ready to pull the trigger on hiring somebody, you know you are pre-qualified. And this is employpg.org backslash rapid grants backslash, but you can go to uh, employ, you can go to employpg.org and just go to COVID resources and go to rapid reemployment grants. So from our businesses, we will post the job, we will help you recruit it, we'll do a flyer, we'll promote it. We'll screen people and we'll do the grants. And this is free. And Dr. Crew, another area that I think we're missing out on, and if y'all let me talk about workforce, y'all got to cut me off, but our people need this. Our, 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 our people really need this opportunity. Dr. Crew, college graduates. We need, we are really working. We shouldn't have a college graduate walk across that stage and not have at least interviews and employment lined up. And for and I think. Um, the center mentioned social services, we have a huge opening in social services, human services, workforce development uh, for college grads. And one of the things I want to highlight, even at Employee Prince George's, because we have job openings, the starting salary for a career consultant fresh out of college uh, can be $56,000, uh, which, is, which is something to look at. And so we have a need for career consultants. But all of our colleges and universities, uh, we have a lot of jobs and, and, and Dr. Crew would love to work with you and whoever, but I wanna make sure that when we say a youth or young adult, a lot of times they think that doesn't include college students, but if they are a Prince George's County resident, Howard, American, Bowie State, University of Maryland, University of Maryland, Eastern Shore, Morgan, they are eligible for these programs. Well, you know, thank you so much. I will share that with my career services uh, unit. Uh, so that's really good to know. And um, thank you so much. This has been such valuable information and love to partner with you on something. So. Definitely. And, and, and that's one thing that we see, especially with our HBCUs. My, my mailbox is full of uh, public institutions that are accessing these free programs for their graduates. And I really want to see more HBCUs and partner with more HBU students. Nothing against public, any public institution or our private institution, 
but I think the HBCUs get left out a lot of this funding um, and opportunities. And I think that's something as a predominantly minority county, we should really promote that, uh, that ensure that our HBCU graduates and students get access. And so our summer youth programming is also open to college students because in school, our summer youth program goes up to 24. So that means if they're a student, but they're a junior in college, they could qualify. We've done it before and even had some of those students work with InGen and other companies. So youth includes college students. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to say also that uh, we have a partnership with 2U uh, and that's our MSW online partner. So if you ever need someone to kind of talk about what it means to be a virtual career counselor, I can talk to people about that because they are partnering with Howard's MSW online program. Thank you. I have one last question. Do you have difficulty getting the employers to buy in to your program? No, I mean, that's what I said. Our last job, we had 54 employers, 611. Um, we don't. There's a lot of job openings right now, especially with the $15,000 grants. Uh, we had over 150 applications in the first 30 days of when we launched that grant program. Uh, now, I think we get a lot of employers from different, from the same industries. Some of you are unique em employers, uh, Letitia. We struggle sometimes uh, with, with some of those very unique, but, you know, a lot of times we have a lot of employers that, that come through. And, and for our employers, uh, we have business consultants. We have seven or eight business consultants. So each employer gets matched with a specific business consultant by industry. In our, in our conversation, you said that the employee is done the same way, correct? Yep. Each employee gets matched with a career consultant, each job seeker, once they get enrolled. And so we have three tiers of service. Tier one is community engagement. This is another thing to touch on. That means if you just come and want to get information, we'll give you information. Tier two is like a group workshop. That's tier two. Tier three, intensive services, is when they really get enrolled in that program. The biggest obstacle we have there is people don't believe it. Like, oh, everybody give me all this for free. And, and they don't come back. They literally think it's a scam. That's why you all as community champions and representatives of your neighborhood, of your community, that's why you can join the network, epgcd2 at co.pg.md.us. And you get all of the information I'm sharing. You get weekly newsletters. We help people apply for grants. And so we want our community leaders to be community champions. Because the biggest issue that we have in our county is a knowledge issue, is that they don't know these resources are available or they don't trust it because it seems too good to be true. At 99% of the time, free everything is too good to be true. But this isn't really free. This is paid for from grants from businesses, grants from the government, uh, taxpayer dollars. So it, it's not really free. Uh, it's been paid for by somebody. But that's the biggest issue we have Letitia, is that knowledge, either people don't know or they don't trust. I want to I also make sure if anybody else in the audience had a question, I definitely want to get that addressed. Um, if not, we can kind of just sum up and just thank you for, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sliding through to see if anybody has any, any questions or hands up. Nobody? All right. <laughs> Feel free to email us if you have a question. All right. So I just appreciate you again. I know we probably could have this conversation for hours, literally, because, you know, you're passionate, we're passionate. And I just love seeing just the diverse backgrounds of the people who are on here. So I know it may not be necessarily people who are looking for jobs that may some of those people are here, too. And I'm appreciative for that. And they'll tell people and then people who are in their, their perspective, you know, workforces, they'll tell people. So hopefully you'll be flooded next week. <laughs> Let's do it. And, and, and also, if you are, if you work in or you have a community event or you're an employer, email us because we're already getting requests for that mobile unit. So I can, I'm telling you by March, we're going to probably be booked out for the entire year for that mobile unit. So if you think you have an event in August or July or September, go ahead and email that epgcd2 at co.pg.md.us email it now just so you can put us in range and we will bring the mobile unit and do an on-site hiring event for you as an employer or bring resources to your church or your community event. 
We also, if you are delivering food, either hot food, prepared food, or food baskets, through the Transportation Logistics Program, we can provide you with volunteers who are currently unemployed residents. So we can do volunteers to help you deliver food. We can bring the jobs in our site. So I, I, I got a lot of different, we didn't go in there. We went through a lot, but there's still more, but email us with your community events. And, and I, I wanna say thank you, another Senator Jabal, but thanking the Senator, uh, I wanna say this, without people like Senator Griffith, these resources don't exist because they fight in Annapolis to make sure that Prince George's County gets those same resources. And without the staff, uh, without all of you all, she can't do what she does and can't support you all. Because I'm gonna tell you, this office was busy during COVID, uh, very active. Letitia has emailed me before. <laughs> uh, and so I wanna thank the Senator, but I wanna thank all of you all staff. It's a thankless job. We get yelled at, you, get, you do all the work. I know. And, and, and so I want to say, Ms. Rousseau, uh, Corinne, Najee, Letitia, anybody I missed, thank you for having me. Thank you for your service thank you. Uh, to our community. And, and thank you, everybody else, for allowing me to, to be a part of this program tonight. All right. And I, I just want to let everybody know to keep, stay on the lookout for uh, upcoming Let's Talk. 